all season, 15 teams have battled for ACC supremacy. There have been prime time performances. Here comes Angel rushing the ball down the floor. McClellan, slam Nail bite. One second left. Good Evanson won it 74 73. Come back. And upset. Clemson on a break. Jordan Roper lays it up and in. What a win for Syracuse. First ever win at Cameron. Some teams have exceeded expectations. The Hokies have turned this entire season into a statement. While others struggle to reach their potential. Some players lived up to the height. The long two on the way is good. 25 for Blossom. But everyone knows that legacies are forged in March. Now they step into the Verizon Center and on to the other Supreme Court in our nation's capital. The slate is wiped clean. Each player has the opportunity to claim the spotlight, and every team has an opportunity to hoist the championship trophy. Dozens of media outlets set up for broadcast, hundreds of event staff prepare the venue, and tens of thousands of fans stream into the stands. Over the next five days, teams will battle as the nation watches and fans, friends, and family lend their support, but only one will prevail. The 2016 ACC basketball tournament is about to get underway. Two original members of the Atlantic Coast Conference, Wake Forest and NC State. At tournament time, every mother becomes a coach. As a parent, it's just a proud moment to watch your children uh, excel. And this is my neck of the woods, so everybody showed up. Some families have traveled from just a few miles away. My son, Brian Crawford, plays for Wake Forest, and I'm excited because the tournament is home. The family from all around is here today with us, and we are having a fantastic time. This is an awesome venue at a big stage. It means the world. Devin Thomas steps into the passing lane. Ahead to Crawford. Driving stop from the right side. Well, that'll make you relax in D.C. And the hometown fans over there. It's been great. Since yesterday, I've been close to visit my boy. It was out to spring from the stand. You're out there to support the side. And it's still me. Thomas, he falls away from the corner. Throws it up at the horn. No good. And the game is over. And State hangs on to win it. 75-72. to 72. Wake on its last possession had three shots at the rim to try and tie the game, but none would fall. That yeah, was a tough loss. It was certainly the Maverick Rowan show for NC State. The kid was unbelievable from downtown. But here today, Boston College is going to have to contend with Malik Beasley and Dwayne Bacon and Xavier Rattan Mays. That's a dynamic backcourt. Other families fly in from across the continent. It means an awful lot to us, especially to me, because my family comes all the way from Alaska. Because he's a senior this year, too, it was really important that we came and supported him. FSU attacking Devin Booker. Lobs the ball, slam, dunk. Turnaround jump shot, Clifford. Bullseye. Boy, he's hot, isn't he? Pass goes to Malik Beasley. Goes up for the layup. It is no good. The rebound followed by Devin Booker, always hustling. I always tell my mom, let's go, y'all, let's go, y'all. I mean, she wants me to have more energy. And even my other teammates here, of course, they'd be like, your mom's a fool. I'm like, yeah, I know. She's, she's great, though. I think everyone here is Malik's mom, so <laughs> she's really loud. When our kids hear us, they really get enthusiastic, and it feels like home when we have a lot of people together. After Florida State beat Boston College, the realization that BC senior center Dennis Clifford had played his last college game set in. I couldn't be prouder of a human being. You have to show a caring for what you do. And these kids played hard every single night, and I take my hat off to them. The sting of defeat lasts a little bit longer when you know that you won't be back playing at the tournament next year. Great teams are anchored by great players. And this year, the top ACC teams all feature exceptional senior talent. James Robinson, the starting point guard for Pitt has always been a poised leader, but he had to learn how his skills best fit into Jamie Dixon's system. When I first got here, I didn't quite know what my role in the team would be. From day one, I just wanted to be a really good listener and learn. 
James Robinson's a winner. Leads by example, quiet, unassuming, but committed to doing things the right way on and off the court. He's a guy that's always trying to get everybody involved, and he'll sacrifice a lot of himself at times to try to get others going. His patience has paid off as Robinson has developed into an elite point guard with an assist to turnover ratio of almost four to one, which put him in the top four in the nation. I was thankful that I was able to play here for four years, kind of gained that much appreciation and respect from the fans here. You know, as a senior, you always know if you win games, you can prolong your career. So that's just my number one goal right now. It's just about go time here at the Verizon Center. Syracuse takes on Pittsburgh. Playing Syracuse and then playing here. This is a homecoming of sorts in a lot of ways. I mean, it was a big rivalry in the Big East. I mean, we both came to the ACC together. It's been great games in the ACC as well. So the Orange are fired up on the defensive end. They've held Pitt to four points, two of those at the free throw line. We practice against the zone every day in practice. But their zone has changed. So the first couple minutes of the game, you're trying to feel the zone out while still being aggressive, but uh, realizing that it's not going to be the same. Orange had a double-digit lead. It has been cut in half. Pittsburgh has momentum. Chris Jones to Johnson. He hits for the tie. 26 all. And Pittsburgh is on a 12-2 run. Left elbow jumper. Good. Nothing but that. Pitt is in front for the first time. So the front Whoa. of the zone. Cooney over that zone is Artis, he bangs it down from 23 plus. We got ourselves in a big hole. You're down 11 or 12 points with not that much time left on the clock. But these guys, like they have all year, they made an incredible effort. Out to finish, hey, he'll take a three. This is unbelievable. I'll tell you, the resiliency of this Turkish team is incredible. 68-66, back across, picked off by Roberson in a two-point game. Roberson to finish, he's up the invisible ladder. Ties the game. Benazé jams it at 68 all. This is an incredible comeback for Syracuse. Just a few minutes ago, the Panthers had a 12-point lead, and it has disappeared. Franklin Howard dribbles, guarded by Artis. It's something that we usually don't do, but um, I saw opportunity. I just shot the gap on defense. Wings it, let's see him. James Robinson, he's going to dribble four court. The ball was right there waiting for me. I just went down the other end and finished the layup. Behind the back, shot, score, and the Panthers take the lead on Robinson Steele, 70 to 68. Gets in there, 12 footer in the air, he yes. stands it. The senior Robinson puts Pitt up 72 68 with 22 seconds to go. Finish for three, yes, and it's a one point game. You've got to be kidding me. Six seconds to go, Cooney over midcourt, Cooney crossover dribbles, defender slips, Cooney NBA three. And it's off the rim, no good, and it goes out of bounds. Game over. Pitt advances. What an up and down basketball game this was. Final score eight beats nine, but barely. A win is a win is a win. But boy, it wasn't easy, Bill. Nothing at tournament time is easy. <laughs>
at halftime, you know, we're saying we've got to guard them a little better, and they're probably saying we got to guard NC State a little better. That was kind of like a, you know, prize fight going at each other. It's like a mass unit in there. Lennard is limping all over the floor. Cat was holding his elbow. I'm, I know he's hurting, but he's not going to ever use that excuse. And Plumley got hit in the nose on he that did. fight for the rebound. Yeah, he may have, may have broken that nose. His nose was broken, and it says a lot for him to come back in the game. He's obviously going to play with some pain there in his face. He's been a great emotional leader for us all year long. We know how tough he is. We know he battles down there in the post. So to see him come in and he's got blood dripping down his face and he's still out there yelling like a maniac, I mean, it, it fires the team up. It was two consecutive plays that, that Marshall made to win. Plumley high in the air to get it back up, fighting his way up, gets the basket, and gets foul on the play. You can see the grimace on his face every time there's contact. He's played a terrific game. What an afternoon for ACC basketball. You had eight double-figure scores in this game. Yeah, thank goodness we had three more points than them. You know, I've had a lot of teams. I've been head coach for a good while now, and I've had teams that's won more games uh, in a season. But I'm not sure I've ever been as proud of a team. Playing college basketball in the ACC is a dream come true for any high school athlete. But it requires discipline, hard work, and resilience. Rover pull up for a long two when he got My freshman year, I just wanted to contribute to the team any way I could. I really started playing well. I was hitting shots for our team, and I was playing with a lot of confidence. We finished our season, and we started team workouts the next day. And I had a 7 a.m. workout, you know, finished working out, and I was headed home, and I dropped my cell phone in Victory Hall. I could see myself picking up my phone, but I couldn't feel it in my left hand. I knew something was definitely going wrong. I was slurring my words, and I, I wasn't in my right state of mind. When you have a stroke, you don't really notice that you're having it. Luckily for me, I did not have any physical aftermath due to the stroke. But mentally, you go through a storm that you have to fight through. I went through a state of depression and fear of just maybe it's going to happen again. It makes you fight for things that you truly want. My relationships with my friends and family, my academics, and just, you know, happiness. Being a NCAA basketball player requires a lot of physical and mental and emotional stability. This year, I just wanted to go onto the court with a clear mind. Tonight, the Clemson Tigers, the seven seed, battle 10 seed Georgia Tech. The Tigers coming off just the fifth 10 win season in ACC history for Clemson basketball, but Georgia Tech is red hot and they've won five of the last six. Offensive rebound, Jacobs puts it up and in with a left hand and Tech's up five and still dominating the glass. Battling through adversity. That's something that Coach Willie instills in all his players. You just have to play free-minded with confidence and live your life with confidence. Roper to Blossom game. Who drives inside, kicks into the corner. Holmes for three. Yes! Roper off a screen from Jate. Stops to the foul line. Bounces down low to City for a two-handed rim rocker. The Jackets, after the early lead, have seen the Tigers come roaring back here. Now Clemson leads by 18 and a timeout for Georgia Tech. We were so bad those first 30 minutes. It was unbelievable how bad we were. Unbelievable. Our guys just never stop. With about nine minutes to go in the game, we we're down 17 or 18 points. Associate head coach Chad Dollar, he said, hey, let's make sure now we stay positive with the guys right now. We don't want to splinter at the end of the game. Times like this and games like this, you just stay calm, stay poised, and just believe in your teammates and your coaching staff. We have a group of seniors that have been through a lot. Great resolve, great resiliency and they are tough, and they recognized it, and they went out there and did something about it. He'll step into a three and finds the bottom, and back comes Georgia Tech. Eight-o run for Georgia Tech. Made away jump shot. And it's good. To a 10-point deficit. A 12-2 run over the last two and a half minutes. It's an eight-point margin. Down the lane to the rim. Up and in. down to six. A valiant comeback here. Smith for three on the wow. right wing, and he knocks it down. Five-point game. Jackets are back in this game. With 12.9 left. In those situations, they're playing more aggressively. They're just attack mode. 
you've lost all your momentum. Just change the flow of the game. George's Hunt will go to the free throw line to tie the game. Unbelievable. Holmes will dribble it up. Everybody standing in Holmes the Holmes to the rim. Floater off the bar. Tap back by Noka. Won't go. We're going to overtime. And Georgia Tech explodes onto the floor like they just won the game. I tell my team we do everything with a winning attitude, winning effort, and a winning mentality. We never think about, oh, we 18 down, let's panic. We think about, let's do what we're supposed to do. This league is so good, and the teams are so good. The difference between teams comes to the attitude and the energy level and the confidence. And our guys right now have all three of those, and we just needed to make sure they knew it and then to get it back going again, and that's exactly what they did. Everything going Georgia Tech's way. Clemson can't Stop believe it. Though, right by Noko, White again. Oh. Tech's going to win this thing. This is the most unlikely sequence of events to get a W in the ACC tournament. We're going to have to do some research on and this. And the ball game is over. The Jackets come back from down 18 and defeat Clemson in overtime. Tired, man. That game beat them, beat me up, but feel good. It may not always work out, but I think you always remember that you gave your all, and I think that goes a long way. You know, it's something that'll take me for the rest of my life. Man, it's crazy. Like my family, my mom, my old teammates, my cousin. I know my grandma gonna call me, probably give her a mini heart attack. <laughs> FSU comes into the late game with momentum. However, they must contend with a Virginia Tech squad that has exceeded expectations all season. 62% of our minutes have been played by guys that didn't have a uniform last year. We got a chip on our shoulders. We're just trying to like, win as much games as possible. Every day, just folks will get better. The first thing that we want to be about internally is great character. We play for one another. We're not selfish in what we're trying to do. And I think our guys have matured into that. Tech continued their hot shooting. They are 17 of 27 from the floor. Knowles are 11 of 31. We didn't start the game how we need to start the game against a team like theirs. We need to come out with a lot of intensity from the jump. In. Uh, we didn't do that. We let him get into a rhythm. FSU has not led in this game. We're looking at a double-digit deficit ahead. Even when we build a double-digit lead, you just got to keep attacking, keep trying to get to the rim, and just keep playing rumble like we're down 10. When the players are doing the coaching, instead of the coach having to do all the coaching, that's what you want. They understand what one mores are. They understand what multiple paint touches are. They get all of that. We were playing really well together the whole game. We played for one another. We had 18 assisted baskets. Buzz got them playing within themselves in order for them to be successful. People think that there's a shortcut or a secret or we found it on Google. Uh, it's not. When you build something based off character, that gives you your best chance for success. Tech defeats Florida State. In front of a big hokey crowd here at the Verizon Center. The entire arena filled up with maroon and orange and they are serenading the up-and-coming program of Virginia Tank Hokies. Every ACC basketball player has a bit of swagger. But some wear their swagger like a badge of honor. Notre Dame senior Zach August has asserted himself this season as a premier rim protector. His haircuts draw attention to him on the court but they also draw his teammates together in the locker room. Back in my freshman year of high school, I was tired of paying $20 every other week to get a cut. So uh, I started trying on myself, and then you know, I kind of picked it up, and I was pretty good. My friend asked me to cut his hair because he seen me cutting mine. So I started cutting a lot of people's hair. You know, I'm pretty much like the team's barber now. It gives opportunities to chat about stuff that usually we don't have time for. Style, the demeanor about you, that, that look, that appeal, something that kind of distinguishes you from other people. When I look good, I feel good, and then uh, ultimately that turns into me playing good. I'm the, just an the energy guy. It's the Notre Dame Fighting Irish laying the Duke Blue Doubles here in the quarterfinals. The Fighting Irish continue their quest to win back-to-back -back ACC titles. Three is 
good by Brandon Ingram. Into the paint. Off the hands of the intended receiver. Long throw front court. Breaks it out of a slam dunk. Here comes Duke. They've opened up a 40 to 35 lead. Blue Devils feeling pretty good right now. We played just really well for 28 minutes. We had that double digit lead and then boom, they seized on the opportunity. With the nucleus of guys that returned from a championship team last year, there is a great will to try to find a way to win. And I have seen that for two years now, and today was the ultimate backs against the wall. Between me, Steve, and Demetrius, and the rest of the team, we came together, um, you know, we emphasized what we needed to do. We had positive criticism. You know, we challenged ourselves to, to strap up, lock down, and, and execute in the stretch. And Notre Dame making a run on the Blue Devils now, 8-0 over the last three moments. Kennard driving into the lane, loses the ball. Here comes Colson on a breakaway. Colson goes up strong, lays it up and in. Here come the Irish, 64-58. Ingram drives into the lane, and his shot is batted into the Duke band by Zach August. Zach is playing as good as anybody in the country. He sets the tone. You see he plays with high emotion, which I think is contagious to his teammates. Some of the stuff he did today is amazing. August just wow. barking at anybody who looks in his direction. August now spins right side with the ball. Reverse layup up and good. It's a two-point game. 64, 62. Uh, Beecher, three-pointer on the way. Got it! Notre Dame leads for the first time. They were relentless. Notre Dame has scored on every Duke turnover in the game. Notre Dame 67, Duke 66. Allen with a basketball now. Ingram for three, knocks it down. Back and forth we go. Duke 69, Notre Dame 67. Everybody on their feet here at the Verizon Center. Colson out to Beecham for three. Got it again! We're tied at 70. Time out, Notre Dame. Tell you what, everybody's getting their money's worth here today. Everything magnified at this point. Gets it to Kennard. Kennard, the runner left side is no good. We will go to overtime. And Coach Bray has his overtime face on. Back out to Allen. They're all over him. He goes inside. Leader up. Good. Allen looking for some opening. He's going to take it inside. Gets tripped. Grayson Allen. He's going to take it all the way down inside. Gets bumped. Shot wouldn't drop for him. But if he can knock them both in, it's back to a three-point game with 37 seconds left. Grayson was a battering ram for us like he's been the whole season. Tried to carry us. Grayson Allen, of course, running three. It, um... It wasn't enough. No good. Rebound high in the air. August with the rebound. August on to Jackson. Jackson over the midcourt strike. Jackson is fouled by Grayson Allen with 15.7 seconds left. You know, I think that that final 16 seconds when I fouled out was just, I mean, it just kind of hit me that we had lost the game and we're packing up and going home. And so as a competitor, I, I want to win the game. I don't want to be the guy going home. So. All the emotions kind of flooded in at that time. Coach K giving Grayson Allen a huge hug as he comes over to the bench, just really appreciating the warrior-like effort that he has put into this game and every game all year. 27 points today for Grayson, really carrying a lot on his shoulders in this contest. Jackson over the midcourt strike, and it's over! Notre Dame's defense of its ACC title is still alive. That was a little bit of the personality we had last year. Playing fearlessly, going after it, believing we were going to do it. They remembered how it felt to win a championship and cut a net down. And, you know, I'm sure they're talking about cutting a net down in D.C. Carolina comes in after a season of scrutiny as the ACC regular season champion, but with a lot still left to prove. First team all ACC center Bryce Johnson and point guard Marcus Page anchor a deep and experienced UNC roster. The college experience is a great experience. Last year, we didn't have anybody that anybody said was going to be a lottery pick, so they made the decision to come back because that was their best option. But they also love school. They love playing at the University of North Carolina. It's not been the easiest four years. When I first got here, 
I thought I was going to play behind Kendall Marshall five or six minutes a game, but um, he left, and uh, he kind of handed me the keys to the program and to the team, and, you know, you probably had more confidence in me than I did at that time, and a lot of people were down on me as a freshman, but the one thing you did is you always believed in me. You know, you always told me, I believe in you, son. You're going to make shots. You're going to do fine. You're going to be a great player. I can't thank you enough for that because that allowed me to be a confident person myself and helped me grow as a person. Talent is always a good thing to have. Experience is a good thing to have. When you have experienced talent, uh, you know, then you can really be a lead. Marcus Page, he's actually now the team leader in assists, but James Robinson led the league in assists this year. As four minutes and 21 seconds into the game, the Panthers have a 10-4 advantage, scored the first eight points of the game. Robinson to Luther for the long jump shot. Good for three. Young intercepted it. He'll get the run out done. I was not pleased at all with the way we played in the first half. That last five or six minutes, we got much more active defensively. We got six straight stops. Crosses the floor to Barry. His long two-point jumper. Got it. Boy, Barry has come up big. Pinson aggressively to the rim. Bounces it to Johnson for the monster dunk. And that time with Pinson drove Boy, it. Boy, Barry the took a backcourt steal. Right away from Robinson. Goes to the rim. Count it. Barry with 13 first half points. Three seconds in the half. The Cameron Johnson blocked by Page. And Carolina's fantastic defense will end the half. The intensity that we had there in that stretch was really important. It made me not go crazy as I was going to go at halftime, that's for sure. Second half, doing a better job of rebounding and moving the better on the offensive end. William the Bear, his long three. Britt, start the break. Pinson, extra pass to Jackson in front of the rim for two. Over to Pinson, left corner to Page, an open three. Yes! They had a lot of people that they were throwing at us, and they were just rotating guys. We weren't trying to let them get easy cutches. We weren't trying to let them get it too close to the basket, and that was a game plan, and I just don't think we executed the game plan well. Bounce pass back door, taken away by Barry. Barry in traffic, middle of the floor, hands it off to Johnson. Oh, what a play. Man, this has been impressive. The Tar Heels are moving on to the semifinal round of the 63rd ACC Tournament. We realize it's going to be a quick turnaround. We're going to allow the guys to enjoy this for three or four hours, and after the game's over with, we'll get together tonight and talk and do our preparation for that team that we're getting ready to play. Georgia Tech hopes that its Cinderella magic carries into a tough matchup with Virginia. They're battling both a high-ranked seed and a home court atmosphere. Tech and Virginia on the floor warming up. It's kind of the jackets against the world here at this tournament. Georgia Tech, the underdog against the number two seed, Virginia. Jackets had 19 offensive boards against Clemson last night. That's a tremendous number. Offensive rebounding is going to be extremely important. The Virginia defense is so good. When you get second chances against them, that's a tremendous bonus. We knew they were good. The fact that they had won seven of nine games and played the way they did in the second half against Clemson. The league is so balanced. The standings or seedings are a little bit overrated, so you just got to be ready to play. Wilkins kicks to Brogdon for an open three, and it's good, and Virginia's in front 23 to 20. Malcolm Brogdon has seven. Brogdon places a foot. Oh! Get into it. Player of the year is red hot. Malcolm Brogdon, not only the ACC Player of the Year, but the Defensive Player of the Year in the league. First guy ever to get both awards in one season. Mitchell right to the rim with a right hand, got by Wilkins, slapped it off the glass and down through the nylon. Inside of a minute, Tex right back within two, 30 to 28. Say all things considered, Randy, you go in only down two at intermission, that's pretty darn good. Overall, a pretty solid half for Georgia Tech. We just said, look, the, this game is, it's kind of hanging in the balance. If we can get some stops and then wear them down a little bit offensively, just keep working to get the kind of offensive shots or looks that we want and make them earn. That just, over the course of a game, can wear people down, and that's what we tried to do. Parente spins off a defender, pulls up, down the 17-footer. It's an 8-0 run for the Cavaliers. Brogdon tried to back his way in on Georgia's hunt base. It fires, and he connects from the left baseline. The Jackets with their backs against the wall. Hand of Parente with three to shoot. Oh. He drills the ball from straight away. It was cold-blooded. <laughs>
kind of just wore us down, man. You could you can kind of feel it. We're only down two at the half, but they had a lot of momentum. We responded at times, but after a certain point in time, it's too overwhelming. And Brogdon, Gill, and Brent as sit. Those the three leaders, and they get a standing ovation by the Virginia faithful. I love the fact that Malcolm Brogdon and many others are showing you can stay, develop, get a degree, get a master's, improve your stock, and be a better player mentally and physically for that next level. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Basketball is a big sport in Puerto Rico. It's not a day where you don't have the opportunity to play outside. I was blessed to do really well when I was a kid, but I knew that if I had the opportunity to come to the United States, it'll be a whole different level. But I was able to get through it, and here I am. Playing in Miami is pretty special. I have a lot of supporters that have seen me grow up. I always told myself that if I made it to a higher level and I had the opportunity for kids to look up to me, that I would give back and be as nice as I possibly can. When people speak about me, I want them to have positive things to say, not only on the court, but on the community as well. To know that this is my last year means a lot to me because Miami's home. We are inside the Verizon Center for the 63rd ACC Tournament. Miami and Virginia Tech. The Hokies have won six straight games, and they are playing as well as anybody right now. Jim Laranega, for the last three days in his training camp, has been emphasizing defense, defense, defense. Double team from Jakiri, taken away by Rodriguez. It's a drag race to the rim. Pass in front to McClellan. He scores. He's bumped. He'll earn an extra shot. Palmer drives off the window and good. James Palmer was determined and would not be stopped. Hudson against Reed, poked away. Here's Jaquan Newton, open floor, full ahead of steam. Newton with a scoop shot, it's good. And Buzz Williams wants to talk it over. It's a timeout for Virginia Tech. Miami has their largest lead of the night. They started great offensively, and we started poor offensively. We played five guards for four to six minutes there to close it. To be where we were at half spoke to the resiliency of the group. Short range jumper goes from 12 feet, and it's a six point game. Wilson shoots to the right side, bids, quick release for three. Got it. 33 28. Hokies trying to claw back in it. Drops it off to Kiri, lost it off his palm, and it's a turnover. A surge from Virginia Tech with a minute 24 to go. Blackshear turns right, goes back left, draws the foul. Blackshear will go to the line. Hokies have closed to a three point game, and as Hokie Nation rises here, inside the Verizon Center. So this one is going to come right down to the wire. They play with a lot of speed and quickness and driving ability. And so you have to put your fastest, quickest athletes out there. Rodriguez pulls up for three. In the air. Good! Three ball in the air. He rings the bell! It's another long three. He takes the ball away. His layup is good. It's a one-man wrecking crew. And his name is Angel Rodriguez. He's ignited the Hurricanes attack. The Hurricanes are soaring now. They made six of their last seven. They're on an eight-nothing run. All propelled by Angel Rodriguez. You know, I'm a confident player. So I was just taking what they were giving me. I'm not quite sure if they were just getting confused or whatever the case might be, but they left me open, and I'm not going <laughs> to deny that, so I'm, I'm, I'll take the shots. We ran the gamut of all the different defenses we could, changed the ball screen coverage as often as we could, and uh, none of it, none of it uh, was very effective. Rodriguez gets free pass down low. Jakiri slams it home right through the eye of the needle. The horn sounds, and Miami will go to the semifinals against Virginia here at the ACC tournament. The semifinals, four teams remain. The memories of last year's defeat still haunt the Tar Heels, and Coach Williams is determined not to let this year's victory slip away. The Fighting Irish continue their quest to win back-to-back -back ACC titles. A lot of highly skilled players on the floor, 
two squads that are very well coached. It's going to be exciting basketball this evening. Very straight away. Back to Page. A long three. Gets it to August. Right elbow. He fakes. Fakes twice. Now he takes the jumper from there and knocks it down. Coming out to Barry. Pump fake for three. Goes right down the lane. Gets the roll. Beecham drives left side of the lane. Beautiful finger roll off the glass and in. It's 13-11. Vincent, the lob to Johnson. Oh, my goodness. He just dumped it down. Back on out of Beecham for three. He got it. Nice pass to the baseline to Jackson, but it's blocked away by Colson. Barry Page, Jackson, Pinson, and Hicks going a little smaller here. Page breaks his ankle and drills a three. Jackson loses it, taken away by Pinson. He's in the run out and stumbles, but somehow still scores. Tarios are fired up right now. We were in a one possession game with four minutes to go before the half, but we turned it over a bunch. They were in a groove, and I thought their defense was fabulous. Small ball lineup gave a whole lot of matchup problems. We just took what the defense gave us and executed. Pinson checks the clock. Ahead to Barry for three. Yes! Carolina closes the first half on an 18 to nothing run. But you also know against a team that came back from down 16 to beat you that there was a lot of game left. We couldn't celebrate early. It was a very pivotal moment in the game, and we wanted to just keep our foot on the gas. Barry, head of steam down the court, scoops it up and in. What a fancy shot by Barry. We couldn't make passes. They contested stuff. They've got great length. We were careless with the ball, all five of us, and we made some uh, uncharacteristic turnovers. And a, and a good team like North Carolina is going to capitalize on that. They got a lot of transition points. Tonight, we just amped up to another level. Uh, guys flying around, taking charges, affecting shots at the rim. It was just a total team effort. Back door, Meeks finds Page for the layup. Hicks tries to force it through, two players lost it, recovers out to Page, he finds Jackson for the easy layup. And a long three from Page, and that's good. My teammates are confident in me, and they look to me to be a leader. I haven't been leading scorer on the team this year, but they still look to me to be aggressive. Page has been all over the place today, and the Tar Heels exercise some demons against Notre Dame. Carolina wins by 31 points. It is the largest margin of victory in a semifinal ACC tournament game ever. This was a beatdown. Great atmosphere here. It is a pro Virginia crowd. Miami under the direction of the reigning ACC Coach of the Year, Jim Laranega, as he wrestles that distinction away from two-time winner, Tony Bennett, who'd won it each of the last two years. Parentes passes back out top to Brogdon. He unports the three, and he splashes it through. The ACC Player of the Year gets off to the hot start yet again. Here is a three-pointer from Parentes, who rattles it through from the right wing. And Virginia is off to a tremendous start. This partisan crowd in orange and blue stands up and cheers as Virginia takes a 10-2 lead. Last year, a lot of our losses were because we started off slow, so we try to focus on great starts. I think when we play with energy, when we play with passion, and we come out with just fire in our eyes, we can get off to a good start against anyone. We were really anxious to start the game. We didn't do the things we planned on doing. Back trying to get inside. Lays it down low to Murphy. He juggles it, lost it. And Jakiri wrestles down. A tough rebound. His pass in front for Newton is too high and out of bounds. We threw some passes, I, I really believe, were about 100 miles an hour. Those are not plays that we've made all season long. To start the game, we were too anxious. It felt like a road game, so I think we kind of let the crowd affect us. Just trying to make plays that wasn't there, really. Another turnover, and Rodriguez lost it out of bounds. The way we turned Miami over tonight, we were in the gaps. We pack it in, we jam the lane. So your guys on the ball, you're pressuring the ball. If you're not on the ball and you're in the gap, which means you're in help side, and I think that that really frustrates teams. Murphy steers it in the paint and turns it over. Jakiri left of the key. Here comes Wilkins in the 4-5 trap. Oh, boy. The ball is just too slippery for Miami. Jim Laranega pulls Jakiri over to the sidelines and says, just make one play. 
This is an important part of the ball game right now. Max tries to drive in. Step back jumper by McClellan is good. Rodriguez tries to get in the paint, puts it up on the window and scores. Down low to Murphy. Slam dunk. Just say to Rodriguez. Wants a three. Good. Angel Rodriguez steps off a three-pointer. And this is as close as Miami has been all night. Angel is a guy that's gotten us maybe the past couple years I've been here. He's shifty, can get to the lane really well, and has a very good feel for the game. You don't want Angel Rodriguez to heat up because we saw what he could do when he scored 11 straight points last night. Comes out top to Rodriguez. Rodriguez sneaks his way down the lane. Now straight out, far right side. Off the window and good. Now into the paint with six seconds to go. His layup is no good. Lawrence puts it back up with three seconds to go. And it's a three-point game. When it comes down to the last couple of minutes, uh, I'm really just trying to get the ball into Malcolm's hands. Inbound pass from Parentis. He gets it to Brogdon. Brogdon's fouled with 2.1 seconds left. Well, this is important. These are about as big a free throws as this young man has faced all season. One of my roles on this team is uh, step to the line confidently at the end of the game and, and try to finish it. And Virginia will go back to the ACC championship game for the second time in three years and for the sixth time in program history as they take down the Hurricanes, who battled to the end. 73 to 68, our final score here from the Verizon Center. All right, Cavalier Nation, exhale and reload. <laughs>Finals. Two teams remain both stacked with senior leadership and hungry to claim ownership of this Supreme Court. UNC seniors Johnson and Page are playing in the championship game for the third time in four years and are anxious to cut down the nets for the very first time. Brogdon and Gill have climbed this mountain before but are eager for another view from the top. Virginia and North Carolina are moments away from tipping off the Atlantic Coast Conference championship game in a jam-packed Verizon Center here tonight. Both fan bases have shown up in full force. The crowd is evenly split, and it is loud in the Verizon Center. Let the show begin. into the front court. Puts the shot off the back iron. No good, but the rebound off of Gill's hands and into Pete's hands. He fades and fires. Brogdon driving inside. Puts the shot. Putting it off the window as he hits it for the low block right. And Virginia is on the board. Parentes, he flicks the wrist from three. And he buries it. Virginia with its first lead. Johnson feeds down low to the open. Meeks who will kiss it in. Putting Carolina back ahead by two. In the first half, it was a very up and down game. The atmosphere was awesome. A lot of fans for both sides. Both teams battle to the best of their abilities. Brogdon driving under the baseline, fades and fires, contested shot, rims around and drops. Shaylock down the baseline, stuffs it down with a one-hand slam. What a play from Mariel Shaylock. Paul, a head fake from three, drives around Johnson, now feeds underneath Gill, powers the shot up, in it off the window. Great ball Eight movement two. again, and Virginia leading 23-17. Virginia, they play pretty much the opposite style of us. They slow the game down because they're really effective at doing that. If you turn the ball over, you're not giving yourself a chance. An intense first half in D.C. Whips it across the court to Barry for an open three. Gotta have it, and he does. And he cuts that deficit down to one. Page driving it on the right. Stops, pops. Carolina has the lead. 135 to go in the half. Brogdon straight away defended by Marcus Page. Gets his man in the air. Pulls up. Carries the three from the left wing. Malcolm Brogdon just as calm as can be. As Pinson with the alley-oop from half court. Gracious Johnson caught it and laid it in. With a first half like that, it's only fitting these two teams are tied at the break. Wow, getting good now. Man, this is intense. These two teams have just been pulling at each other, and every possession feels like it's such a big one. This is how an ACC tournament championship should be decided. 
Jones, very bounce pass right in the lane to Meeks, draws the trap, now passes it across the court, intercepted by Brogdon. He's going the other way with it. Feeding the heel, dribbles inside, takes some contact, absorbs it, and hits the shot up close. Barry dumps it down low. Here's a turnover. Johnson trying to pass out of the trap. Once again, Brogdon's Johnny on the spot. Gallops down the lane, floats it off the window. Brogdon sends it down with a thunderous two-hand slam. That's got this place buzzing. Virginia fans to their feet. Virginia's defense creating some problems here in the opening minutes of the second half. Roy Williams just leaning up on the scorer's table, furious. What happened there? I've been harping on, pleading with them, begging with them all year long to understand how important the defensive end of the floor is, and we've gotten better defensively throughout the season. Page knocks it away, a great defensive play. He'll start to break, trying to take care of it himself, and he does with the left hand. Nolte somehow gets the offensive rebound, but as he tried to save it, Hicks took it away. Brogdon stripped on the drive by Bryce Johnson. We're a defensive team, and in North Carolina, they really picked up their defense since the first time we played them, so it was a defensive battle today. I just tried to play great defense because our coaches challenged somebody to step up to guarding Brogdon. I've always been a guy that just tries to lose myself into the game and do whatever I can to help these guys. Some of those turnovers that led to some buckets for them were real costly. Shot clock down to four. A really tough step back. Too strong. Page with the long rebound. Long step back. Off the mark by Brogdon. Bounces out to Brogdon. His three. No good. Page. He forced Malcolm Brogdon to go four of 13 from the field. One of six from behind the arc. Marcus Page is one of the five best defensive players in our league. He has been a sensational defensive player for four years for us. Gutsy performance by Page. He is the only thing keeping Carolina in this game right now. Can you feel the tension? You can cut it with a knife in here. There have been 10 lead changes. Fans for both teams on their feet. Passes out Barry all by himself. Three pointers up and good from straight away. 51 46. 454 on the game clock. Frentes gets it into Hall. Whips it inside, taking away Justin Jackson. He'll get the run out dunk. Carolina by seven. Splits the high hedge to the rim. The floater no. Johnson cleans it up with the layup. It won't drop. Gets it back and scores. Carolina leads by nine. You just got to believe that the next shot is going to go in. Playing Virginia, we knew it was going to be a battle all the way down to the end. Some of you guys are banged up. You're tired. I said, but so what? Your confidence doesn't really waver. You just have to keep shooting, even on tough shooting nights. 145 and counting, and now Virginia's really in trouble. Brogdon places up the three, but he knocks it down from the right side. That will pull Virginia back to within six now, 55-49. Boy, Brogdon has had guys in his face all night. He's 5 of 20, but that's a biggie. Virginia needs someone, anyone, to step up and make a shot. Now feeds it to Nolte in the corner. The three, it's good! Evan Nolte cuts the deficit in half with one smooth-looking jumper. Page middle of the floor. On the left, out to Hicks. Spinning in, elevates, gets the roll! 57-52. Brogdon racing off with five seconds to go. He's into the front court, passes to Gill. Gill, long three, straight away. That's good. Wow. Holy Point smoke. two seconds left. It's a two-point game. Barry, who was fouled by Parentes, will go to the line for the ACC tournament title. Got it. 61-57. Virginia inbounds it. That's it. The Tar Heels are the 2016 ACC Tournament Champions. Basketball is pretty doggone important in Chapel Hill and University of North Carolina, so winning the regular season and backing it up and winning the conference tournament is extremely special. With their 18th ACC Tournament title, that's just one behind Duke for most in the conference. This win also gives the Tar Heels the most wins and the highest winning percentage in the history of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. This is what makes it all worth it, is to, you know, have a team come together in my last year and work through a lot of adversity and, you know, become outright champions and win the tournament We've been in this situation three times, and we finally won it on the third try. You know, we had our doubters. We had our people that didn't think we could do something like this. We proved everyone wrong, and now we're ACC champs. I think we are the most criticized, really good basketball team I've ever coached and the least appreciated. That's a pretty doggone